Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we have with us Professor Ijaz Ahmed and we'll be discussing the situation arising out of the talks that the, the US and the Taliban have been having. Ijaz, how do you re read this situation? Uh, the United States has been having negotiations with Taliban in Doha and it seems that President Trump wants to move out of Afghanistan and therefore having this meeting in Beijing, which was Pakistan, uh, Russia, China, and the United States. Uh, it seems that Pakistan is now being asked to take care of Afghanistan. And uh, that is a new strategic alignment because for a long time, Pakistan was seen as the major destabilizer in Afghanistan by the United States. India seems to be out of the mix completely. So how do you read this realignment which seems to be in the process? Well, if, uh, one thing is that if Pakistan is the, seen as the potential destabilizing factor, then that is the factor that needs to be brought in. You know, so uh, so that, that's a part of That's how I see it, uh, Pakistan's uh, presence in that. Um, <clears throat> I think uh, I think Trump certainly would like to be able to say to his uh, following in the United States that I promise that I will get out of Afghanistan and look, this is how far we have come and we are getting out of Afghanistan and so on and so forth. So, uh, so there seems to be some intention, some serious intention there uh, from the point of view of what works well for the elections in the United States. Uh, now, the, and there does seem to be a situation where uh, the Taliban are meeting the entire spectrum of Afghan society. Uh, they have, of course, refused to meet officially with the government, and therefore government high official can, officials cannot meet them even in private capacity. But some lower level officials of the government, they have agreed to meet purely in private capacity. So that, that's one very interesting factor that their refusal to meet this so-called government of Afghanistan, uh, Ashraf uh, Ghani and so on, has not derailed the uh, the um, peace peace talks, so to uh, say. The, the peace talks. Uh, that that uh, to me is very interesting. That Americans seem to be willing to uh, you know uh, to uh, sell sell uh, these people off and sort of you know just fire them as they did in South Vietnam. Uh, you know, they, they, would, they have no qualms about it, getting rid of them. And it's also very interesting that Hamid Karzai is playing a major role. He himself was present in, in Moscow, and his clansmen were very prominent in Doha, although he himself did not come. So uh, those seem, they seem to be interlocutors. The seriousness of the Taliban is shown by very high level officials, high level people in the Taliban government or uh, Taliban uh, organization who are now leading the, de the delegations open, you know, and so on. So all of that is there. The very interesting uh, thing, the meeting actually was in Moscow where uh, the Russians were the main players, and it was only after that that in Beijing, the United States uh, and China also joined. So the, the, there seems to be a multi-pronged uh, development going on there. All the pieces seem to be in place, and uh, they're, they're saying in this, uh, the last meeting in Doha, they were saying that 80 to 90 percent of the uh, the Qatari government announced that that 80 to 90 percent of the agreement seems to be in place, and they are astonished how close they are. And there is some hope that there might be an agreement by September 1st. Now, they 
Poland is being there. The question is, the Taliban controls 70% of the country. At the moment, yes. At the moment. The, the moment the, the peace agreement is signed or seems to be signed, the rest of the country will move over to that. And presumably so, the Afghanistan government, at least uh, top sections of it will have to leave the country, like the, shall we say, the DM government uh, and so yeah, on. You know, it's, it's, that's not very, really, you know, we just don't know how this will actually play out. You're right, uh, uh, Ghani and so on, but, you know, there's a blood, you know, there's 20 years of blood almost, uh, you know, 18, 19 years of of blood in which Hamid Karzai is as much an enemy as um, Ghani is today. Ghani is just today. Uh, and so on. So, uh, on the one hand, yes, there is this grand upon custom to uh, sort of make peace only with your enemies. Who else do you make peace with? Etc. Uh, <laughs> so, all of that is there. My, actually, my interest is in seeing what do Americans get out of this? You know, they cannot concede Afghanistan to the Taliban and just walk out. Um, on the one hand. Well, they, here is the Trump issue that comes in because he said, I think in an interview about a month back, that I do not want war, I think with, uh, the, with Fox News. Tucker Carlson, that I don't want war, and I have brought down from 16,000 American troops to 9,000. I want to get out of Afghanistan. Do you think that's really what he's planning to do? Well, I mean, you can't make a war in Iran and make peace in Afghanistan. You know, <laughs> so... Well, um, if you're Trump, maybe you can. <laughs> you know, in, in Trump's word, there is probably some notion that What is that it? Can. How many and contradictory opinions can you hold at one point of time? Lewis Carroll. Okay. Yes, yes. <laughs> so. And the other thing is that, you know, the, the, the news is very scanty, very sparse, but in all the news that is available to us, there is no discussion of where Iran is in all this. Now, Iran is a major player in Afghanistan. It has hosted millions of, of refugees in, in the past. It's still ho hosting a very large number of them. There's a whole area of influence inside Afghanistan, um, that of Iran. Iran has had a very long involvement. It's a major interested party. The Hazaras it's, and so on, which are very yeah, close to Iran, it's, it's not culturally. A, uh, it's not anywhere in these negotiations or in any news coverage of, you know, uh, outside the negotiations, what the hell is going on, etc. So there are large areas of ambiguity in this. But the biggest one for me is, is the United States really going to, uh, <clears throat> to concede Afghanistan to them? Uh, all right, here is my reading of the situation. What they really want is for some sort of an agreement sort of required to take place, which, which can then be presented in the, to the United States public as we have brought peace to Afghanistan. And now we are just sort of mopping it up. So I think it is, it is really for, you know, optics. My sense is that so many very, very diverse agreements have negotiations and agreements have to be executed inside of one society, which is by now extremely fragmented and conflictual. That just uh, this kind of agreement, you know, in Doha and Beijing and so on, uh, this is not going to, to bring the peace. This can only create a framework within which negotiations inside that society can take place 
because Afghanistan is, it's, you know, it, it's a very different kind of society. And after 20 years of warfare, the kinds of conflicts that, that exist inside the society are very, are very, very great. Um, the number of terrorist organizations, if that's the word we want to use, um, that are floating around in the Pakistan Afghanistan border, various branches of Al Qaeda, the uh, you know the Daesh is there, uh, the Tariq uh, Taliban in Pakistan is there, and all that. How are you going to have a negotiating framework in which all these forces can be taken out of that region? So my sense is that uh, there's a, there, there's a, there, there are lots of optics involved. There are, you know, uh, but what the best possible scenario is that they get to a point where violence de-escalates and they can have some sort of a ceasefire agreement or something of that sort. Uh, whether or not that is possible, I'm not very sure because the only thing that Taliban have going with them is their firepower. They are? They're they, they firepower. Firepower. They are, the <laughs> only, they are the only ones who can bring peace with the gun. With right. all other, in respect to all other Afghan forces. Yeah, but, but, but you know, if they come to an agreement, a peace agreement, then what is the leverage for them? You know, so, so it's, it's very hard to see how any kind of settlement of some sort, even stability, a stable situation can be achieved. So what you're saying uh, is there can be an agreement, but at best it will be the start of a process. But the process is a difficult and a long one, particularly reconciliation within the Afghan society itself after 20 years of bloodshed. That's, yeah. that's the basic thing that you are, you're really putting on the table. And hopefully the United States, instead of a destabilizing force, will gracefully be in a corner and hopefully withdraw out of the mix. Well, uh, I, I don't think they will. You don't think they will? Uh, they, they just brought in Daesh uh, into Afghanistan within the last six months. After all. You think you that's know, a uh, part of their contribution? I mean, and there's, I mean there's news uh, whether or not it's true, we don't know. But uh, there's a, a very credible news that they were flown in on American aircraft. The Daesh. They, they didn't just sneak into the country. And there are areas where they are fighting the Taliban. So, so you know, uh, you bring in that and you think under that pressure, Taliban are going to concede a ground for you, you must be mad. So, is it, so the, the pieces don't. That is why I think it's not of these optics. One last point, uh, uh, Praveen, is that I think the media is overplaying this question of Trump has to say this to, the, to his public. I think there's some exaggeration in saying that Trump needs to present this to his uh, to his following here. Afghanistan is not a major issue in American politics right now. Actually, right now in American politics, it's not an issue at all. Because there's so many other issues. The biggest foreign policy issues are China and Iran, not Afghanistan. Um, Afghanistan, there's hardly any mention of it uh, anywhere. And there are these explosive things going on inside this country. You know, so, uh, so his, his being able to say, oh, I, this peace agreement in Afghanistan is not going to make that much of a difference to it, to it, to it. So I, I was thinking that before we break this, uh, wind this up, last point I wanted to ask you, 
and let me frame this independently. Uh, yes, apart from what's happening in Afghanistan, the United States and Pakistan, which we have discussed, do you also see that the United States is finally recognizing that a peace process in Afghanistan needs China and Russia as well? Yes, uh, but they have, they are recognizing it only under duress because they have no cards to play. You know, Afghanistan, I mean, Taliban have really won. So at the moment, this containing Taliban means inviting others to help, except as you have noted Iran, and that's, that's the, really the issue. Yeah, that's right. That, 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 that again shows, you know, uh, how far Americans can go. Uh, you can't really put Iran out of the picture. But this is quite extraordinary. And, you know, uh, that's why the, the meeting in Moscow actually struck me very much that all the Afghans were going to Moscow. The delegation that went to Moscow, the other Afghans, was much, much more powerful than the ones that, than the ones that went to Doha. The cream of the Afghan uh, uh, politics outside the, the current government went to Moscow. Because they see Moscow as a force who could talk to Iran and the emerging scenario in Afghanistan. And, and Iran is and, necessary for peace. And the balancing power and the power that had re entered the, uh, this region after Syria, after the victory in Syria. And, uh, and, and the role it is playing with Iran. Thank you very much, Ajaz, for being with us, explaining to us what the larger contours of the picture that is emerging in Afghanistan. Hope for peace, I guess, all around the world, that this will really culminate in something which is a durable peace and not the peace of the gun. Thank you very much. We'll be in touch with you and discuss other issues as well. This is all the time we have in NewsClick today. Thank you very much. Do keep watching NewsClick.